Welcome to the second episode of Series 50. Mm. Our first episode had some fantastic discussion mixed in there with our shenanigans. Yeah. Um, listening back to it, I'm surprised at like how much actual content there it's was. It's very coherent, surprisingly. I, it is. It is. And I think that we had a <laughs> lot of good advice and a lot of good talking points. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, between Dylan rolling his eyes at us. Yep. <laughs> Um, but definitely toward the end of the episode, things started to get kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, this episode, it just keeps going. Just keeps going. Uh, we we rev that going. engine to 11 and, and uh, you know, we don't put the brakes no. on at all. No. 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 And and other car puns. Other car puns. <laughs> Before we get to that, though, uh, our usual announcements and maybe some inane chatter mixed in. I typed that in there. Um, Mm -hmm. But we're both really tired, so probably not, actually. Yes, it's fine. Uh, You know, if you're not tired uh, by now, uh, first up, you have one more day to submit questions for a Q&A episode. Uh, If you are listening to this on release day, we will be setting down tomorrow afternoon on Tuesday, May 10th, to record our answers to your queries. Uh, Theoretically, we're only going to record half of it, so you might have an extra week. We'll, We'll find out. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how far we get. We'll yeah. see how much goofing off we do. There are so many questions. Don't worry about it. I will say, well, not tell you that later. That's fine. <laughs> this doesn't need to be recorded. There you go. If you have anything you want to ask us, anything at all, please submit your questions at questions.charactercreationcast.com. Next week, Monday, May 16th, the One Shot Network is hosting Miracle Monday, which is a superhero-themed charity event to raise money for Trans Lifeline. Uh, The event, which is organized by our own Jeff Stormer of All My Fantasy Children and Party of One, will be streaming all day on the One Shot Twitch channel. There's going to be tons of great content, including an actual play recording of us, along with Jeff and John from System Mastery, uh, playing a holiday-themed Super Sentai game using the characters that we created in Series 49. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, except we remade them in Sentinels, so technically it doesn't count as playing our characters. Exactly. Um, but you can check that out on Monday, May 16th at twitch.tv slash one shot RPG. I don't know exactly what time our thing is going to be on, but it doesn't really matter because you should just watch the whole thing. You yeah, just watch all day and throw just money at it. put it it's on fine. in the background. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, If you are looking for other ways to spend your hard-earned money, we recently released some more bonus content on the OneShot Patreon feed. Uh, If you want to hear us attempt to build a base in the 1986 Marvel superhero game, or if you want to hear Amelia be as frustrated as she's probably ever been during a recording, you can check that Mm -hmm. out by becoming a patron at the $5 and up level at patreon.com slash OneShot Podcast. As usual, we are still in need of reviews. We haven't had any for a bit. Um, And so we hope that you would consider leaving one. Even five-star ratings are really helpful, but we would love to read your review on the show. Uh, You can leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, or on our Facebook page. If you want other ways to connect with us, you can find us all over the internet. Uh, We're on Instagram at CreationCast, on TikTok at Character Creation Cast, because Ryan made that one and didn't (laughs) follow the naming scheme, Uh, on Twitter at CreationCast, or you can join our Discord and talk to us directly at discord.charactercreationcast.com. Absolutely. Uh, That's it for announcements. Uh, Join us after the episode for our calls to action. But for now... Uh, in, enjoy whatever whatever this show is. Yeah. time on Character Creation Cast. Aram was creating a Loxodon bard. Dylan was creating an orc cleric. Amelia was creating a digigod sorcerer. And I was creating a perfectly normal vroom vroom rogue. 
don't worry about it. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. Are we rolling for our stats? That's a very good question. I mean, I feel like we probably should. Or are we doing point by? Yeah. Which one are we doing? Um, what? Which whatever. one involves less math? Well, well rolling, rolling involves less always math. a bit more math, but it's more No, fun. rolling involves less math uh, well, we because usually, you just have to add a... Rolling involves you don't less have math. to figure out the point by. But what version of rolling are you doing? Are we doing four die six drop the lowest? Standard, yeah. Oh, Which yeah, is, that's, yeah. that's standard, well, yeah. right? So there's a little well, bit of math adding, involved. But, so. No, there's just not counting those ones. <laughs> are we going to roll real dice? I yeah. say we can roll real dice, All right. uh, or we can... Uh, we can do, you can pick from the array if you really want to. That's so dumb. Um, <laughs> sorry. If I get a, if I get a chance to roll by clicking clicks, I'm doing it. Yeah, I mean we paid money for these things. <laughs> Stupid a, money. I put them in a beautiful vase. All right. Uh, I'll use my Mishra dice. Die. There's Ooh. a die. All right. Yeah, I still don't know what I'm going to be though. Uh, I mean, I'm monstrous archetype. Okay, sure. But like. We have a room. Is there a super spy rogue supplement? Probably. There, but I, so I had a hard copy of a book called Spy Game, which was a spy-based 5e book. Oh, and wow. it was actually really awesome because it treated gear as magical items, That's cool. which I thought was really smart. Uh, but I did give it to my brother for Christmas. So. I'll be. Call him up. <laughs> All right, I'm rolling. Not right. a good roll. One, two, three, four. Let me get to my... my there we go. Five, three, 13. All right, so what do we have? Five, 11. Five. There we go. Gross. So gross. Well, that's marginally 13. better than a standard array. It's <laughs> Mine, mine's shaping okay. up to be marginally worse than a standard array. Oh no! You want to try numbers? I can give you an eleven. Seven. <laughs> I've got a five and a seven so far in the mix. My highest number is thirteen. Dylan's got a whole lunch, whole week of tuna fish sandwiches at lunch, and he's trying to he's trying to trade them out. You know what? It's fine. I've got two sevens, a five, a ten, an eleven, and a thirteen. Yeah, well, one of your class um, features is be a car, so like. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know what? I'm not going to be playing this character, but I'm there. It's fine. Okay. I'm putting a 15 in strength just because he's, he's an elephant. So he's stupid strong for no reason. I wanted to be like a hyper competent spy car, but maybe I'll be in the bumbling spy car. Yeah. You could be like, you know, you always have like, you always like blow a tire or something. Mm hmm. Yeah. Your windshield wipers a squeak. So whenever you're trying yeah. to sneak. Okay, so uh, we're doing attributes. <laughs> um, we just rolled, and now we have to assign our roles to our various attributes. Yeah. Um, Dexterity is probably going to be the thing I need the most, right? Makes sense. <laughs> Tight turns. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Handling, uh, really, it should be called. But 11 right. in charisma, uh, so that's my second highest. Yeah. Oh, this is... Oh. 11, this, this 15, 9, 9, 9, 11. <laughs> <laughs> Still better than what I got. 13, Ooh. 11, 14, 10, 11, 17. Yeah, I did really well. You I got cheated. 15, 11, 16, 13, 15, 16. I rolled incredibly well. Oh, but I am using play my... Play that trunk. <laughs> I'm using my My Little my, my little Pony dice, which are magical. Oh, and very therefore, nice. yeah, always give me very really good nice. rolls. I don't think I have any... I've got like some pretty like... Elven dice and stuff, but like not, not all like my, enough to use that many dice. I have these bone dice. I like these bone ones. Nice. All my cool dice were given to me by awesome people. <laughs> Most of them are just playing. That's nice. All too. right, that works. So I've got a, a seven strength, a thirteen dex, a seven constitution, a ten intelligence, a five wisdom, and an eleven charisma. Wow. It is wow. gross. That gross. is awful. I would, <laughs> as DM, I would tell you to re-roll, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, my, my rolls are crazy good. Uh, with all my bonuses added in, I have a 15 strength, an 11 dex, an 18 constitution, a 13 intelligence, a 16 wisdom, and a 17 charisma. 
Oh, that's right. We have to uh, we have to add stuff to to yep. it, right? Okay, add so. your bonuses in. I gotta find so. like, like where's our base like players guides, like, and those might go about. up again when you add your feats in. So, oh so the vroom, vroom vroom traits uh, special recommended for campaigns that start at fifth level or higher. Um, sure. So, so for this for this recording, we're not doing level one characters because uh, right. that's boring. Uh, right. We'll do what level four? I think we decided yeah. on. Do you need five to make your vroom vroom? I don't think I need five to make okay. the vroom vroom. I hate this sentence so much. I like it a lot. Oh, I have to increase my strength by two. And then we're forego the first ability score increase. What? What? Oh, it makes okay. you extra math. Gotcha. You, you, your strength score increases by two. Right. Then you must forego the first ability score increase you gain from advancing in level. Okay. So I don't even get that extra plus one to any, anything right off the bat. Nor do you get the feet, it would sound like. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, or, or you, you can, can just like multi-class yeah. and take three levels in all the classes. And never have to worry about it. It's fine. I have too many books open. Yeah. All right. So increase my strength to nine. There you go. Might as well. Yeah. You got like, you got like, you're like, you're, you are a sleek looking car. There's like 80 horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think that's it. I don't get ability scores at my first level that gives me ability scores. Okay. Is what I'm, what I'm seeing. That is, is that because I've got headlights and fuel? Maybe because you have extra Those... stuff. Well, like, you know, back in 3.5, like, they would give you templates, right? So if you wanted to play a vampire who was also a fighter, like, the vampire was like a plus eight level adjustment. So you mm -hmm. can't play a vampire until everyone else in the party is eighth level and then you're first level vampire. So they might oh. be introducing some <sighs> elements like that. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it looks like I've got like built-in armor and stuff though too. So sure, which would explain which would explain why. But but then again, like I mean, the artificer is a very powerful class where you're basically like you know by level three you've got power armor. So mm -hmm. okay, yeah, I've got a lot of different things, a lot of different moving parts uh, on this this vroom vroom. You are a car. Build. That does make sense. Yes. <laughs> uh, I said spoilers before, and mm -hmm. I, I technically mean it. Oh. Uh, weapon integration. But we should really change weapon. gears on this conversation. <laughs> I, I know. Okay, so we, we've got our abilities, we've got our races, and, and most of us have our classes. Our, did you figure out what you were doing for your class, Amelia? Um, well, I want to use a, a sorcerer subclass, I think. So I think, obviously, then I have to... Sorcerers are fun. Use the sorcerer. Two big class. guns and then things they can do all the time. It's the easiest thing to remember. I love it. I'm trying to see no, if there's something I'm else of that I can like. I am. <laughs> I, am <a> bad, <laughs> I am a bad DM. <laughs> yeah. Swing at us. You're a person, I guess. Oh, that. Oh, this could be really interesting. It's the nicest thing you said all week, Dylan. Oh, so this has like a whole other. In in the Tasha's Crucible of everything else. Um, mm -hmm. There's an artificer su subclass called the Effigist. Uh, they use a combination of arcane and eldritch arts to manipulate bo the bodies of other creatures by way of dolls and figurines. Um, my first thought is bobbleheads on the dash. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. I love that. <laughs> I absolutely adore uh, that. That's amazing. But but that's not a, that's not a good spy car. Uh, although... Well, I don't know. My spy car is not the most wise. Maybe so. you're the kind of spy car with like a lot of contacts and a lot it's of like, you know, here. you lean heavily on the information ring you've, you know, generated. Maybe. Who knows? And they're all Maybe. represented with bobbleheads on your dash. Like a, uh, a spell casting spy car. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Plus the bobbleheads cause Dylan pain. So we should really push that hard. <laughs> I can have bobbleheads regardless. Yeah, it's true. I, I can have them. We could all have them. Everybody, my whole party has their own little bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I'm going to, I'm going to play heavily into my background. He's going to be a smuggler. So he's this saxophone player, right? Goes from place to place on lots of ships. He's got this whole kind of like, you know, B-list celebrity musician thing going on where he hits the local inns and has a whole tour. But he's really a smuggler. 
moving lots nice. of goods here and there. A lot of magical contraband, I believe, is what he would work in. Magical contraband. Magical contraband. So he's so he's got like a bag of holding, mm. right? And he uses it, and it's like, but it's but it, it's like a very simple bag. He he has it sewn under his jacket, and he uses that to just smuggle in as many goods as he possibly can. Yeah, yeah. Always looking to sell you like you know, like a little magical a trinket, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's very good. I I like I like this guy. I like Johnny Sex. Obviously, <laughs> it's his stage name. Yeah, yeah. I could I could be a temple raider type rogue. Uh, that's, that's kind of a, like a spy, uh, infiltrator yeah. type. I would right? love to know a temple raider who brings back fantastic magical items. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a fence. Uh, the funny thing is, is their, their, their spellcasting ability is wisdom based. Sure. And my wisdom is five. That's a great start. <laughs> Listen, that just limits how <laughs> many spells can you can prepare. That. You just need one. Right. Just one good one. hundred percent right. true. I've got a um, spell with a eight DC. Uh-huh. Um, I, I would like to see how I do the uh the hand movements. Flapping the doors for these spells, but you know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the bobbleheads uh shaking a certain pattern. <laughs> the headlights okay. flash. It's all like Morse code. <laughs> oh gosh. It's just uh, the windshield wipers. Like, mm -hmm. Making little patterns. Amazing. Yep. Or, or, you know, you have those little people have those little LED bars in the back of their cars so they can send messages. It'll just say the spell. <laughs> oh, right? no. It'll just go off. It's just Every, a little ticker tape. Right. It like comes out like a smoke screen, right? Oh, Lord. <laughs> If you have to deliver, if, like if it's a spell like fog cloud, you don't cast it. You you just drift around mm -hmm. the area and mm -hmm. just leave it. Yeah, I like this character. Oh Lord, Dylan! Next time we next time we record nope. Kill Every Monster, I'm going to be a car. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. I want to I want to be a 1960s Beetle, please. <laughs> It's like uh, Army of Darkness, where the car gets taken along with uh, with Ash, but then like the car is actually sentient as well. Yeah, this That'd could be, be like this could be like nope. Overdrive. Hey, this could be like the movie Overdrive. Be. They were monsters. We can, oh, Dylan. You know, we're looking for other systems no, to play for season four. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear <laughs> me out. <laughs> we do Overdrive, and we use Car Wars rules. I mean, I'm. Car War, if you, I'm too old. Car Wars is a fun system that existed from uh, Steve Jackson games. It is no, over. I heard about it on System Mastery. I'm but just that was enough to make you. You heard about it on System Mastery. It was like enough of a sentence. We use car. Yeah, I, I know. I know what you're talking about. We use no. Car I heard you the first time. To yeah, we use car. I feel like none of this is like going to get like it's not. <sighs> I'm not finding what I want here. <laughs> I got a good one. I no, don't. I like that one. Got a good side of that one. <laughs> I collect them like treasures. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, I think maybe I need to change the race that I'm playing. I think that's All right. part of my problem because it's right. just not. It's just not coming together. These things don't match. Follow your joy. Well, I just don't know how I hey. can do blood magic as like a digital. Can't do blood like magic. This is hard. No, yeah, you can. it is important. So. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What if you were one of those Theranos machines? <laughs> and that's how you got all the blood. No, because that only needed one drop. That's true. That. <laughs> and they don't work. So, <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you can always, like, have digital blood, yeah. right? Yeah, this you one. You could be like a mimic. Involves, like, <laughs> I'm think, growing thinking, horns like, and things, I need too. some blood. You just like get a little bit of blood, and then it's just like like pixelated uh, drops that come up. Right. It's, it's like it just like a little health bar appears. You like you have drains. like a literal digital inventory, and yeah. you just like <laughs> slot it into one of your little digital slots, yeah. and it's just like All a right. little blood drop. All right. That'd be, that'd be cool. It's fine with a little number for how much you have. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's logical. <laughs> I support it. Uh huh. Because I can't do this one because it doesn't make sense either. Why am I trying to make it make sense? I guess it doesn't. It doesn't. Not even. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, oh, this one might be good. Um, Imperium Investigations. Oh yeah. Let's let's see what that is. I'm just looking at supplements right now that will that will fit my spy rogue type, and this one looks like it's. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, that one. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, I think that would be like the best one for you, probably. A bard. There's a cleric, paladin, ranger, master machine. Suggest this one I have over here, but there's I don't a, have a digital copy of it for you. School of Dramaturgy, master machinist. What does this one do? Using alchemy and magic to craft a mystic machine to measure the endless passage of time. Okay. What is this telling me? No, this one's not speaking. That's in ranger archetype too. Bardic type college of consultation. Although be, being a bard uh, car would be amazing. A bard car? Yeah. Being able uh, to just throw the doors open because, and turn the radio on? Yeah. Uh, no, I could just use my custom horn to oh uh, to play my... <laughs> I hate it. Play La Cucaracha and a fireball which comes up. <laughs> Why? Why is that the one you picked? Because when I hear custom horn, the only thing I can think of is La Cucaracha being obnoxiously played over a loud like car horn. All right, so not that one. We're narrowing it down though. Okay, so I'm gonna be this Digigod sorcerer. I get to increase my intelligence and my charisma by one. Anything else cool? Hmm. It says technically I'm lawful good. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate a line. It's not good. For what it's worth, they've it's they've scrapped good. it out of uh, the Monsters in the Multiverse book for all the playable really? stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. They leave it in for anything in the monster section. Which I'm not that annoyed about, quite frankly, because it's. I don't feel like because they're not like, you know, like players having to make a decision and then having alignment be involved in that, like, bugs me. But like monsters just knowing, like, at a base, how do they behave? At a base, this is like a, a Does, slash. Do and they murder. have social rules? Do yeah, they, versus yeah. this is a wizard who is, like, not evil. It's fine but... for me until they think. And it's like, what's the difference? What's the difference between a bunch of dragons and a bunch of people? Why are a bunch of dragons a certain way? Because you know in I mean? general, the DM is more likely to ignore the rules when they're inconvenient. That's so like, if I look at a red dragon, yeah. I'm like, this red dragon is going to behave lawful evil instead of chaotic. I can just... Right. Uh. Okay. I think I got it. In the Nightfell core book All right. uh, supplement, there is a rogue archetype called Night Agent. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the wanderer who walks the streets of the night under the constant gaze of the lunar goddess, uh, pledges a tactic bond with her and, uh, from the, the pale force of, uh, can't even read this word. I Doesn't it matter because we're not following the Lord. Yeah. Ah, so you are uh, a so, so yeah, card knight I'm, agent, right? You are I'm a, a card yeah, knight agent. Card knight agent. You are in a way a uh, knight rider. Knight rider. I am a knight rider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Since I have the monsters of the multiverse in front of me, I was like, I flipped to a random page, and there's a thing called the Babao, which is basically like a hybrid demon devil thing. It's mm -hmm. like it's not great, honestly, mostly. But there's a sidebar from. I told him throw it back, Babao. There's a sidebar from Morden I know. Uh, oh, even better. I'm unimpressed by most children. They're a blend of their ancestors, but often more disappointing. You'd think two of the most beautiful, bloodthirsty beings of the lower plains would create a creature of greater potential. Instead, the ghastly Babao fails to match the fiendish splendor of its parents. I like a monster where the sidebar is, eh, f*** this thing. <laughs> <laughs> also, Mordenkind is Amazing. apparently a Yeah, not, oh, yeah. A, not a nice guy. Yeah, what a jerk. Lots of kids don't leave, don't live up to their parents' potential jerk. Man. <laughs> All right. So now, now, now that I'm locked in on a rogue. Yeah. Um, now I get to go to the rogue in the actual player's uh, handbook. A rogue car. A rogue car. A rar. Rar. That's how my, that's what my engine sounds like when I rev. You exactly. are a rar. Like, uh, 
This is hard. I th- I don't know why I thought that yeah. thought this would be easy, but uh, nothing about D and D is ever easy. <laughs> no, really? so it's uh, yeah. rogue, uh, and level uh, level four. I very much dislike on the Dungeons and Dragons character sheet that class and level are in the same field. It's not great. Yeah. No. Despite the fact that no one actually uses their backgrounds, I do like backgrounds. Like, no, they're very good. Why should they give you like a flavor yeah. to work off of? No, I actually do like this stuff in uh, in the Baker background because it gives you two features. One is a specialty, specifically just a thing that whenever you make it, it always turns out fine, which is great. Entirely fluff, completely nice. irrelevant, but also the sort of thing that's going to come up in the game, you know? Yeah. Right, because now that I have it... And when they give you that, like, standard, you can find food and lodging, it also specifically calls out every day that you stay because you're using your baker background, they're going to need you for, like, three hours real early in the morning to get the shop up and running, and then you can stay in town. (laughs) If you need to get information out of them, you know, they're going to be way more likely to talk to you if you walk into a bakery or you talk to cooks, you're talking to your people, but also, you're not staying for free. Yeah, if you if you could need for three hours, they're going to tell you whatever you want yeah. to know. Yeah. yeah, like you are as long now, as they can do it while you're working. You are now yep. forced to interact with the town, and I like that mm. so much better than the idea of is there a church here? Okay, I have a bed. Totally agree. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I have a name now for my character. Nice. Oh, That's uh, the acronym NAT N A T T for uh, Night Agent Two Thousand. Yes. Yes, 100%. Especially because it's like the 1300s. What a fantastic, <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> I love it. I love this horrible character so much. Tony oh. Sachs oh. is going to try to get into this low slung Camaro. Uh, um, I have to get my, uh, my bonuses uh, for each of my stats put together as well. Um, yeah. I forget where that table is. Can you tell I play D and D a lot? I play D and D a lot. I played D and D for forty years, and Dylan will tell you that I do all these mistakes every single time we play, if not more. So minus one. I've had to voice over things in the in the podcast just to make me sound competent enough that the podcast will would, <laughs> would work. Thirteen's only a plus one. Oh, I feel yeah. ripped off. Oh, I'm gonna have to do that too. I'm still trying to. Would you like seven. some of my points? I feel like I have too many points. Yeah. Seven is a minus two, gross. You want to? You want to? You want to? You want to trade a number with me? No, that's fine. You sure? I'll give you a number. Minus should not be three this wise. for wisdom. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm so wise. I want to. I want to so be like the most incompetent, like high tech spy car. All right, because I um, am like the most competent elephant smuggler you've ever met. Yeah, in your entire life. I don't know where we put all of this stuff. Like. I should have invited all of you. Into, oh, no, I couldn't. It wouldn't matter with your car character. There's no way that's in D&D. <laughs> you could yeah, add it. You could custom add it. Like, uh-huh. I could sit there and, like, punch in the car, you know. Ah, oh, the, the vroom vroom. The vroom vroom, yeah. Yep, yep. I love that. Everything should just be like that now. It's like if you make, like, a really strong martial character, it's just like, it's the smash boom. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's the smash boom, yep. Yeah. All right, no, that's the ranger. Okay, here's the rogue. Um, so now, yeah, dexterity should be your highest. Uh, intelligence should be your next highest. Okay, so check and and kind of check. Nice. I mean, I they're both plus zero, so For what's sure. the difference, right? Right. Um, my charisma is eleven, uh, so I'm th- I'm this close. Wow. Once I can get another ability modifier, you are effectively just playing a car. Yeah, <laughs> just, that's gonna Dylan schmooze, was right. That's gonna schmooze people at parties. You're what just, do you want? You're just a beige Camry rolling down the road. I, I, excuse me, I'm an Aston Martin lookalike. Yeah, and are you? I look. Is your charisma gorgeous. high enough for that? My, <laughs> there is a, you point me to the Aston Martin that's ugly enough to have an eleven, and I'm with you. <laughs> it's, it's not an Aston Martin. It's like the off brand. Right, right. It's the knockoff <laughs> it's an, it's the, it's, it's the, it's the Rast, it's, Yes, it's the, it's the Raston Markin. Right. It's fine. It's Raston Markin. Rast, Raston Markin. There's <laughs> absolutely a knockoff Aston Martin somewhere. Um, And then I get uh, eight hit points at first level plus uh, 1d8 
Oh, plus my constitution modifier of minus two. It's minimum one. <laughs> uh, fake Aston Martin <laughs> called the Zagato. And boy, does it look like a fake Aston Martin. <laughs> am, I, am I a Zagato that thinks it's you an are, Aston Martin? You are a Zagato. <laughs> Mr. Zagato that thinks it's an Aston Martin. That's the best. I am. Oh, Lord. My cleric is named Oral. Or, sorry. Oral. Oh, no. It's U-R-U-L. It's an old orcish name. People frequently call him Earl. It pisses him off. <laughs> sure. Like, no, it's just. What does it make him angry, Dylan? Most things. Very pleasant person. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So right. it's not really based on you. No. So since we're since we're doing levels here, are we rolling for hit points as well? Oh, good good question. I mean, if we're gonna roll, might as well roll yeah. for everything, I guess. As a bard, was it a D eight yeah. for a bard? Yeah. And then it's a D eight plus three D eight. I'm right. getting all my metal dice for this one. This is, after all, such a weighty decision. Yep. So what? Uh, I add three D eight. Minus six or something ridiculous. Jesus, okay, hold on. just die. Don't worry. You only feel the old. You're the only player that you literally. So, the dice know about this character, the, and they're trying to make it fragile. Level two is plus zero, uh, which is minimum yeah, one, right? I've never seen a character that starts at a coma. <laughs> So I'll bet. <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm so far behind because I'm trying to like write this stuff down. Take I know. your time. Oh, good. I where roll. are the hit points? Uh, so six. I start with six. I've only made D and D characters three, like four other times in my life. Right. So. Four, six, six, three, four, six, seven so. plus three. So I'm right. up to ten. Uh, you get full hit points at first level. Right. Yeah. Eight, three, four, six. Yeah. With the Constitution modifier, right? Yep. Yeah. Eight plus Good three Lord. is eleven. Plus, plus another four one is fifteen. Plus six is twenty-one. Good work. I have eleven hit points plus four times your at fourth level. Nice, nice. Eleven hit points. Very good. That's great. I've got twenty-one plus four times three is twelve. I've got thirty-three hit points compared to your eleven. I have three times your hit points. Twenty-nine. I'm fragile. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing: I can have my armor integrated with my car. And it would have no disadvantage on dexterity stealth check. Okay, That's and great. what's your when dexterity you bonus again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, plus one. Oh. Better make yep. sure you got I'm proficiency the best. in stealth. I'm the best rogue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the best rogue. Really, rogue. really relying on it's expertise fine. there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Did you get a big speed bonus? It's 40. I have speed of 40. That oh. doesn't sound like enough, frankly. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Zero to forty in one round. Yeah, that's like that's, that's like that's like you know that's slightly faster than me. That's like that's like a slow horse. It's like a okay, mule. so forty feet in six seconds, right? With doing actions, uh, I'm sure there's some math involved there to figure out how many miles per hour that okay. is. Yes, <laughs> it's a little over seven feet a second times sixty is four hundred twenty feet per minute times 60 again. So that's about 4.7 miles an hour. That's stupid. <laughs> that's way too slow. That it's is way not too a car. Slow. That's not a car. I can run that. If I could run that, that is not can a car. Run? Maybe maybe that's just I can combat, run five right? miles an hour. It's not hard. I, I could fall down a hill at five, at five miles an hour. I do have yours the trampler. Didn't, didn't yours list speed, Ryan? It It is 40 feet. Uh, is the speed, which is that's oh, the basic walking that's speed. What mine is too. So and that's currently is base walking speed. You're like thirty right. percent faster than a normal human. That is not what a car can do, Dylan. Like, yes, but and also no. cars can't cast spells. Okay, this is also fair. Well, that okay. we know of. Right. So I I get the armor integration, so I can have like probably heavy armor or whatever, and it doesn't interfere with my deck stealth checks. Yes. Um, I am vulnerable to fire damage and lightning damage because I have combustion. Okay. Um, I've got fuel, which means I must eat plant material and alcohol to burn for energy. Uh, and you require five times the normal amount of food each day. Uh, you cannot become intoxicated from alcohol. Uh, headlights, 
you have the equivalent of two bullseye lanterns integrated into and positioned on the front of your body. Uh, these lights can be illuminated or doused as your free action uh, with an object uh, during your turn. Uh, they require no fuel. Large gear. You can't use equipment sized for smaller creatures. Well, duh. Sure. Uh, non-magical equipment. Gift we're barding. Yeah, non-magical equipment sized for you cost twice as much. Okay, so that makes sense. This part's cool. I could have a passenger compartment. Uh, compartment on your back and hold up to one medium creature or two small ones. So I've got like, like next to my internal organs, uh, a compartment somebody could get into. Gross, but cool. <laughs> right. It's like if, if the cars, cars, sure. Uh, the automobiles from cars, uh, could hold a person inside. Cars. Yeah. Uh, that just sounds gross. You know, this, the, like, I've got eyes for my windshield sort of thing, but I don't think I've got, I don't get it because the concept art for these right. has windows right. and passenger seats. Sure. Which is what it should have. It, it should is that have. the alternate car version? Is no. that the awakened car well, version? Maybe okay. it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. The other one has tinted windows, so you can't see inside. <laughs> but it's got, it's got, uh, it's the, the vroom vroom female illustration. So it's got the 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 more like sexy eyes for the right. sure of course. Yeah. Or as we... Eleanor informed me today, you can tell it's not a girl because it doesn't have eyelashes. And Nate yep. goes, "Wait, do I have eyelashes?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, you can't gain proficiency with shields. Um, iron arm strength deal two d four bludgeoning damage. You are crashing into people. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Uh, you have to be moving five feet to make the attack, though. Upper sure. Slam. Yeah, you need a run up. Yeah. Um. Oh, you get the charger feet for free. Sure. That so seems... it's, it's called streets ahead. You have the charger feet. That's streets probably ahead. why you have, are limited at the first because you get yeah. free feet. Yeah. Yep. Terrible climber. Uh, do your build each foot you climb cost nine extra feet of movement. Yeah, good luck with a rope. <laughs> uh, trample, trampler. So you, if you move so you qualify for the damage bonus from your charger feet and hit with your unarmored attack, you can force your target to attempt a strength saving throw. Or be thrown um, over your hood. <laughs> if the target fails, you can knock it prone as part of oh, your run over them. damage. You trample them, basically. Right. <laughs> right. Gotcha. That's fun. Yeah, and you, I, I've got room resilience where I have uh, bonus uh, proficiency bonus to saving throws against being poisoned, and I can integrate non-magical weapons with my body. Neat. Oh, you could take dash action as a bonus action. That's where your bonus speed comes into play. That mm. that does make sense. Yeah, now we're yeah. up to like ten miles an hour. I know. <laughs> now yeah, I you can, can go, go slightly faster. You, know, you can basically take your foot off the brake. It's bicycle speed. As a uh, as a loxodon, as an elephant person, I have a powerful build. I have loxodon serenity, so I could like drag as one size category larger and lift as one size category larger. Oh. I have loxodon serenity. I have advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened. I, I guess unless it's a mouse, then you know. <laughs> Natural <laughs> armor. My trunk can do some fun things like hold weapons and stuff, and hold a shield. And uh, it also gives me advantage on wisdom, uh, perception, survival, and intelligence roles that involve smell because my trunk is so sensitive. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I, can uh, also, I can also speak elephant. I like that we both have trunks. Yeah, I'd yeah. like that as well. <laughs> uh, it's something we can bind over. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan, do you want to quit? Or I'm, I might just, switch. if we just walk away and leave them here. I might switch from life, Claire, because I don't want to keep any of these people alive. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would. <laughs> um, I picked a digigod. Nice. So I have cryptocurrency, which is you have advantage on any perception check to notice alive. you or... <laughs> hey! It's just advantage on perception checks to know whether I'm being pickpocketed. Okay, it's not even sure, like anything I hate this cool. Crypto just to be able to keep an eye on you have to keep an eye on your digital wallet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, heritage fiend, you are humanoid, but you are considered a fiend whenever it is detrimental for you. Yes. <laughs> uh, living construct, you are humanoid, but you are con your constructed nature gives you the following traits. You are immune to disease and have resistance to poison damage. Also, you can add your proficiency bonus to saving throws against being poisoned. 
if you have proficiency in such saving throw, your proficiency bonus is doubled against being poisoned. Just really can't poison me. Yep. Uh, you do not need to eat, drink, or breathe. You nice. need not sleep, and you don't suffer the effects of exhaustion from lack of rest. Magic can't put you to sleep. During a long rest, which you still need, you remain conscious and aware. Wow. Uh, you can communicate with high-tech machine capable of receiving such communication as if you had telepathy with a range of 100 feet. Uh, how the machine responds depends on its capabilities. Uh, I have nano miracles, so I know light, mending, message, and thaumaturgy cantrips. And at seven level, I can cast Wall of Fire. Wow. Ooh. Once per day. What could your character do again, Dylan? Uh, I have a powerful build, so I have double carry capacity, which was mostly used for carrying flower. Yeah, I've got that too. Uh, what else? I can dash as a bonus action, but I only have a 30 foot base move speed. Car's got that. What else? Uh, if I am dropped to zero <laughs> hit points, I am instead dropped to one hit point. That's Ooh, something. That's, that's fine. Good. And otherwise, yeah. uh, I can heal people. Uh, I took the martial adept feat instead of taking levels in battle master because they are the best part of this entire edition Agreed. Uh, so i can also trip which the car can do and disarm which the car cannot do, do unless it's That's literally a unique running over ability. you until you have no arms <laughs> right <laughs> at 10 miles an hour right but 3,500 pounds, I mean, come on. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean there's something arm. to be said yeah. for, yeah. I can also yeah. bake a hell of a pie, but I specifically got really good at, like, savory pies, and, like, I'm working on a lot of the filling eh. stuff, you know. Just just why put berries in a pie when you can put chicken in it? Uh, mm -hmm. My Loxodon ins insists on uh, no carbs, no... Uh, no um, amino acids, no um, fatty tissue. Okay, and you know those are the three no, like parts of food, basically, right? <laughs> like this is not my problem. You f you figure it out, chef. Uh huh. So you feed yourself. Okay, so Got it. <laughs> I just I just stumbled across something very uh, disturbing about my vroom vroom. Uh -oh. uh, it gets their worse, age. Huh? Uh oh. Um, vroom vrooms leave their mother factories as adults. Okay, sure. hey, that makes sense. Yeah. Those born from other vroom vrooms become adults in their late teens. So they're teenage, like they toddler can cars? They can procreate. They can, yeah. And make toddler cars? Yeah, they'd be like, okay, little, so little, little baby, baby cars. Yeah. Like first, they little start cars, hot wheels, they and then start they grow up, and then they're big wheels. Right. And then they grow up. They're hot wheels and big wheels. <laughs> and they're cars. And then they're like, and then they're wow. like the power wheels, and then they become go-karts. <laughs> And then they become cars. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, so regardless of origin, they they can live up to eighty years. Oh, I've never seen that's a car. Right. Right. That, that is so dumb. Yeah, cars. <laughs> that's how life cars should be like the ones ten 15 years, 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 twenty years. years. Good. Well, you gotta yeah. figure they've got an immune system. No, no, they've got like. Metal. I mean, they have rust. organs inside. Yeah, they, they rust. rust. They don't rust when there there's not real rust to them. Cars should last twenty years tops. Mm -hmm. You can be a car, but you should live for twenty years tops. Come on, I agree. Come on. If somebody hits you with one of those spells that ages you, it should be the end of the game. Also, like a rust monster should be terrifying. Oh yeah, terrifying. Oh gross! Each each vroom vroom <laughs> has a face that moves as if flesh when they speak. Despite uh, being made of plastic or metal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's that, exactly like that cars. That makes sense. That's horrible. Uh -huh. yeah. Automobiles are not totally foreign to some regions of Arcana, but... Okay, Do they have lips and a the tongue? Book. Yeah, apparently. Why would you even ask that? Well, because if they but have it's, sex... It's pla plastic and metal, right? Because <laughs> they can have sex, like, can they kiss? And like, uh, I'm sure uh, they... I'm sure... <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, cars should gosh. not do that. Cars should, should not do that. You but know yes, what? I don't be. need you to like kink shame this car. <laughs> it's true. I don't, you don't know what it's into or what its like social norms are. Amelia, do you yeah. want to help? I mean, do you want to host Kill Every Monster and we can leave these two to character creation cast? I've had a lot okay, of people. And I would like to propose that the first two monsters we kill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've all picked our races. Yes, we have. Uh huh. And yes. now. We need to do classes, and yes. I just like this is where all the skills and stuff are, right? And Correct. the background. Okay. Yeah. 
So I'm just going to go with the sorcerer class because I want to use a subclass from another book, but I'm just going to go with like the base sorcerer class and start putting stuff in there. What about you all? Ryan, you found something different, right? Yeah. So I'm doing rogue with a rogue rogue subclass, Um, the the knight agent, which happens, starts at third level, right? So I have to start building. I have to pick my four skills that I'm proficient in. Um, oh, and and my equipment. Yeah. So like, if you're looking at a subclass, chances are it's going to be level three. I okay. think there's one class where the subclasses start at two. Wizards yes. start is that, is that cl- either one or two. Yeah. Why? It's their, I think Claire, Claire is their studious. It's their specialization for magic. It's kind of something that actually yeah. comes up immediately. How about if you read a book, said the wizard. <laughs> and then the fighter you go outside with like, get a friend how about you touch grass I, the I kind of want to take acrobatics and slate a hand for my character um, slate of what slate of tire slate of slate of hand yes um, yeah yeah oh, you, you, want, you want instead of calling it slate it's of hand of it'll be called blind spot that's what it'll be called on the car I love it oh, it doesn't boy. translate because it's the blind spot where no one can see. That way it's easy to stale. I just said it. I just said it over here and it goes away. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. I'm trying, Dylan. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. So so as my, ro- my rogue vroom vroom, uh, night agent. Okay. I, ch- I chose athletics, perception, persuasion, and stealth. Nice. That's my three proficiencies. And then I'm going to choose expertise in stealth and yeah. persuasion. To explain the persuasion okay. part. The persuasion part yeah. is leaning heavily on the spy movies. I thought you were going to say the horn. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> right, leaning heavily on spy movies. Yeah. So James Bond, you know, it's like. Yeah. This is this is the this is the James Bond equivalent of cars, but just not as good because they've only seen the spy movies like, you know, secondhand. Right. Basically. So they've they've seen the spy movies turned into like plays and and by by bad uh theater troops and <laughs> by me. <laughs> by me so, and my so, friends. Yeah. yeah. So so now that's that's all that's all Nat knows. And uh, now, I, now I have to live up to that. But, you know, I'm sure. uh, trying to be really good at persuasion. All right. I like it. My charisma is 11, so I get plus zero from that. But I get plus two from proficiency and plus two more from expertise, I just believe. Just a cool car. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, it's not I just an extra plus two. Like it's bonuses. Expertise <laughs> doubles the proficiency. Yeah, right. So when does proficiency go up? Level five. I'll boo. Yes. So it's a plus four to everything you have you have expertise in, turning to yeah a plus six the next level. Wow, that's ridiculous. Is playing with a high level rogue is like you you don't yeah. bother making them roll for skills anymore because like mm-hmm. right the highest level proficiency gets to I think is it level eighteen I want to say, and your proficiency goes to plus six. Yeah, at yeah. which point you have plus 12 to all your skills before considering your ability scores. Yeah. Wow. Like, just give it to them. That's it. Yeah. Like, you're using your thieves so, tools at a plus 16. Yeah. Uh, my thieves tool, that relies on yeah. dex, right? Correct. Uh, so I get plus one with that already, and I got proficiency in it. So yeah, plus five. That gives me two. Plus, yeah. Oh, boy. You would be a nightmare to balance a campaign yeah. for. Cause like I have yes. <laughs> I have a bunch of like back of the envelope math that I can do. Cause like any character usually, if you use a standard array, they'll have a plus three in their best stat, plus two at level yeah. one from proficiency. So I think a plus five is like, what do I want? That means that if I give a level one character a 15 DC in the thing they're supposed to be good at, 50 50. Yeah. Yeah, you're level four and have right. expertise in this. Uh-huh. And you have this... Was, it, was 11 hit you points? This, you are a level one character. <laughs> it is horrible. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're yeah, your guy, man. You he have just, a plus um, three to dexterity he, saves, and you're about to get hit by like a level three spell. Mm-hmm. What's the average damage on a fireball? Too what much. Five d eight. So that's forty five divided is, by two uh, six, is twenty two and a half. Isn't it sixty? Is, is it sixty eight? I thought it was sixty six or sixty eight. I think that's six. I can't it's remember. Eighty six. 86. I think it's 8d6. That's, what it, That's what it is, yeah. Uh, okay, so 8d6 on average is 8 plus whatever 8 times 6 is like... 8 times 6 is 48. Can, scientists. I'm sorry, I can do calculus. I struggle with mental math these days. <laughs> uh, so it's 48 plus 8 is 56 divided by 2 is 28 damage on average for a fireball. Mm-hmm. And if you make your yeah. deck save, it'll only be 14. And I'll yeah. still die. Yep. If you don't, you'll take you'll die twice over. <laughs> this is why I don't. Uh, this is so it's <laughs> like you you make the save and you're dropped. You fail the save and you die. Yeah. I don't know why they don't give constitution modifiers to the room room. Well, I think they're also not expecting you to have a minus five in anything. That's, I mean, that's fair. I would have any DM would have told you to oh, reroll yeah, these. these are it's true. Yeah, no one would have made you do this except for the most like cruel DM. Like like for literal sadists. It's the only reason. <laughs> and even then it's not fun because if you really enjoy someone suffering, you want them to be strong before you mm-hmm. break them. You don't want them to show up broken. Yeah. What's where's the where's the joy? Exactly. It's part of why like the probability of rolling stats doesn't work. Like people love it rolling stats, but the average, even accounting for the drop the lowest, just brings, I think, I think it only brings up the average by plus one or plus two. So like rolling 3d6 is average 11 and rolling 4d6 drop lowest, I think is average 13, yeah. which means that three of your stats should be under 13 statistically. One of mm-hmm. them is going to be probably two standard deviations lower. So you're starting to look at like, a seven potentially. <laughs> I'm getting two seven. Yeah, so like, yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, like even with like you know, f- you know, a four die six drop the lowest and roll four die six one more time, you still would have had two really low stats. Yeah. Like, there's no way yeah. of saving you. What I normally do is I'll just I'll just say do point by, but you get more points because I want you to be heroic. Yeah. And yeah, that's how I figure it out. Unless we're starting at like. Unless you're actually like, you know, teenagers, like if you're 15, 16 years old, yeah, point, yeah, point by none of you should have anything stronger than like a 15 unless and mm-hmm. maybe a 17 at the absolute most because you are teenagers. Yeah. Otherwise, like they're heroes. Give them more points. It's not going to break the game. It no. doesn't matter. Yeah. That's the thing, though. I, I like this is a conversation I was having with a, a friend of my partner's uh, last weekend was. At the end of the day, we have this problem where people are trying to build main characters for the party, and the party mm. is the main character. You cannot yeah, come right. to the table with the focal point of the campaign because you have to split it with everybody. I don't mind yeah. the standard array. Having an eight somewhere is good because it means there's something you can't do, basically. You have sure. to rely on the party. Like That feels good to me. Yeah, but yeah. then you take a human being like me, Dylan, yeah. where there are no flaws whatsoever. There's just like it's 14s across mm-hmm. the board minimum. How sure. can you account for something as perfect as I You're am? an awful person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, but an awful perfect person. That, I think that's also the thing that Off, like. Awfully perfect. Yeah. D&D also feels like it's lying to you most of the time. Because it'll yeah. tell you perpetually that like, oh, no, no, 10 is the average score for a person. And nothing sure you isn't. interact with. Has a 10 in anything. Yep. Monsters. Nothing, like, like, in, unless you're just like not getting the stats of like the, the shopkeeper. Well, sure. right? But even then, they'll like, like it's always a retired adventurer, mm-hmm. right? Like a level, because you can't just roll over the shopkeep. They have to be tougher than you, than you so you can't steal everything. So you never meet the average person. Right. That's true, because the party I, would just destroy yeah. them. They'll just but destroy them, right? Yeah, like, like, the party would also be more willing to accept having lower stats if everyone was kind of more average. I would agree with that. If you made the world more... Because, like, um, if 10 is average and you are average, yeah. then in all likelihood you're going to have less than 10 and half of your stats. But here's the thing. Here's why they can't. And you skew it up a little bit, but then you have people who are trying to, like, use their plus two to get rid of that nine. There's a reason why those people aren't there. Because in a world 
with dragons and magic and things that emerge from the ground and eat you, they wouldn't survive. But that's the thing. Only, is that... only the exceptional so people would live. Here's where you're wrong. Classes. D&D right? doesn't say the players are exceptional because of their innate power level, because of their ability scores. It also does that by way of that standard array. Right. Right. But the thing that makes them exceptional is classes. A yes. Random shopkeeper does not have class levels. They have a D6 hit points. They have their standard array. They might have the bonuses from their background. That is it. That's where right. your character building goes. They don't have the goes. right job to get healthier. Yeah, they don't correct. have the right job to get healthier. Yes. They don't have the skills to fight. They don't know how to cast spells. And that's where the advancement right. lives in D&D is most of the advancement is learning new abilities. Becoming yeah, see, more but capable that, that way. New combat abilities. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's like this is a weird world where you only learn things or your things you only learn are valuable <laughs> if they kill things. Otherwise, it'll effing matter. And there's no crossover whatsoever. Like, I don't care how good of a chef you become. You never advance as a yeah, human no, being. No, I, I don't disagree that that's a, a bad way to do it if you're trying to model reality. And it's a problem with adding, having hit points be correlated with experience because... Hit points I can hand wave. Yeah. Like, if I have 50 hit points, it's because I've gotten good enough to dodge those lethal blows, but all that exertion wears me yeah. down, and then I make a mistake yeah. in the end. That I can totally yeah. understand. But, but like, I'm a baker forever, and... I'm never like, <laughs> that's it. I'm never any better. Oh, but that's like, the thing is like, that is not what the game is about. So you don't write that down. But if this was the way you were modeling reality, there would have to be a baker class. And you're now a 20th level baker and you've like put the effort in and you've learned all of these amazing French patisserie techniques and you can turn <laughs> things out faster and you can turn them out yeah. on mass, you know. Didn't there used to at least be like, wasn't there at least a um, a civilian class? Yeah, there or were a couple like of those, that. but all they were was giving right. you skill points, right? Yeah, which is but I that's take the it. thing like is anything. if you gave someone a civilian class equivalent in fifth edition, it would give you your starting proficiencies, probably two random like a tool proficiency and two random skill proficiencies, and then your proficiency bonus would go up. That is the equivalent, right? Right. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, I think they're honestly basically the same. It's like if you want to build a level I'm, 20 baker and make them feel appropriate yeah, to 3.5. I'm actively trying to make your pastry chef be effective here. I'm trying to help you. I don't that's want a I'm pastry saying. chef to be effective because the game's about murder and that's not what a pastry chef does. I don't need them to be able to murder. You could. What if you... Okay, okay but... but. What but I like were, the story of like, yeah. I was a pastry chef and I got shoved into this adventure and yeah. I'm mildly incompetent. And now you're the pie man. Because if you take that feat where you can toss anything, the feat literally Throw says anything, yes, anything you pick up becomes a weapon. Okay. Now you just have a bunch of pies and now you're the pie man. And now you're taking people down with pies. Yeah, but that class doesn't give you any ability to, like, produce pies faster. It's produce pies well. You just need one level of something, one level of prestidigitation or whatever. You just need something, a magic item, whatever. That's a simple thing. It it all it does takes... is make pies. It's a ring that yeah, makes pies. Yeah, but that's the that's point of making it. a baker out of this. If your ring well, makes the pies, I mean, then why are you a baker? Well, that's a good point. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well then, maybe then, maybe okay. a ring that makes space ingredients. Yeah, yes, and then you got to just spend your long rest making pies. You just can't stand watch. Yeah, or sleep. You always be making pies. <laughs> got a few levels so you're like of exhaustion, a baker, right? Going into every so, combat. Right. So you're like a yeah, baker, fair. right? That is okay. pretty realistic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Amazing. So I, I, I changed a couple okay. things up. Uh, because my my knight fell or my knight agent uh, uh, begins with an expertise in either persuasion or intimidation. Okay. So I chose persuasion, mm. um, and instead of doing my expertise from rogue in persuasion, I moved that expertise over to perception. So now I'm very perceptive. Nice. Uh, which so helps you, because my wisdom's minus three. I was going to say if you define nice. per very perceptive for me. <laughs> Yeah. Plus one okay. <laughs> at this point. Um, and then instead of doing a, uh, a one persuasion is one of my uh, skills. 
uh, that I started with as Rogue, I went with Acrobatics instead, because why not? This, this card, card does, does backflips. And by backflips, yeah, I mean this, it has a plus this, five to Acrobatics, so it probably does this, a good somersault. Goes, <laughs> yeah, this, go, this goes over ramps and, uh, and does, like, you know, flips and stuff. Why not? Yeah. So uh, because of that, I've got, uh, that was one of my uh, things from the, the Nightfell book. Now I'm looking at backgrounds uh, really to see kind of what this. backgrounds I can do. Um, and, and there's a lot of good backgrounds in this Nightfell core book, uh, which are, are really interesting. So I'm going to go with the Seeker of Hope uh, background. Uh, so some individuals will never surrender uh, in the face of despair and terror, drawing strength from their natural uh, a pension to spread joy and pursue peace, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, but the important thing is I get a skill proficiency in performance or insight. I chose performance. Nice. Um, and investigation or persuasion. Uh, I'm going to choose investigation. And I also get proficient in a musical instrument, and I'm going to choose car horn. Yes. Do you have like, do, 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 like, yeah. Have like, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could, I can just play the, the songs that I want to play. Yeah, you can, you can basically play any song that you can play in eight yeah. notes. It's like, going to be one of those eight notes. And I, I would play this character completely straight, like, like total, like this was a normal person. 100%. Like I'm in a party. I'm, I'm holding a martini in my like side mirror. But you rolled the window down <laughs> and let him put it in the cup holder. Right. Yes. <laughs> And just talking, schmooze, schmoozing the crowd, yep. you know? I, oh, hey, let me play you a little song. <laughs> Every time you're like, 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 like your mouth is on the front where the grill is. So you just got yeah. like one long straw going back to your own cup holder. <laughs> and that's yep. how you have a drink. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I, I love this I game so much to hate them at the same time. Uh, important thing to point out. Uh, we've accidentally just made a shadow run party. We all recognize that, yeah, right? We totally have. We would 100% have. Like, yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm the smuggler. You're well, the wheels. Yeah, 100%. The weird, the weird smuggler musician as well. Like, mm -hmm. you're, yep. like you take this on to a bit of a, a punk turn and suddenly you're a Shadowrun character. Totally. Like, yeah. Totally. Like, we've, got a, we've got a driver. We've got a decker lining up. Yeah, it just it just has to be a digi saxophone, and then yeah, boom! That's, that's the only. <laughs> it's literally the only transition I need. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to like homebrew this a little bit too, and say that passengers can be the whole party. Yeah, because yeah. it, no, it we're makes all no in the car. Like that was never a question. No I don't care what the rules say. We're all yeah. getting in the car. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I got shotgun. There's no question. <laughs> I'm an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you guys uh, are over here with your like whole backstory and I'm still trying to like read this and understand oh, no like worries. what's what I'm trying to do here as far as like where I've gone for like my abilities let me take a look at that hang on while you're looking at that because it looks like <sighs> I take like my like subclass like the sorcerer's origin right away at the beginning yeah and it's just the book is confusing because it's like pick this at first level most of them give you something at fourth level sixth level and then it's like you scroll down into like one of them and it's like at second level take this i'm yeah. like wait what so wait a minute yeah and you have to go back yeah and then this one doesn't like in the the other book that i'm using it doesn't outline levels for any of it so it's like mm -hmm. do i take all of this none of this some of it like i don't this is again like the only way to yeah. ever get this done is is with the NTP. I know. <laughs> so it's as very a confusing. as far okay. as my bard, I picked College of Glamour. He is an entertainer. He is a performer. All eyes on me. Performance and persuasion are my two expertise skills. And for my feet, I picked actor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Actor gives me an increase of my charisma score by one advantage on charisma, deception and charisma performance checks when I'm trying to pass myself off as someone else, which would be hysterical as if I was just doing it as an elephant. If I was just like, no, I am not that person at all with like a little fake mustache. But no, <laughs> I can also alter self. So there's actually some sensibility to, mm. to uh, this. And I can mimic the speech of another person or the sounds made by other creatures nice yes i like him quite a lot 
as far as equipment, here's what I've done. We're fifth, we're fourth level. So we, we should have some magic, right? So I've kept it in the greens. I didn't go past that. All I have given him is his normal starting equipment, a sling, and the green magical dusts. That's all he has. So he has dust of corrosion, dust Dangerous. of deliciousness. Don't need it. Dust of disappearance, dust of dryness, dust of sneezing and choking. Just the, just the dust. No weapons, no armor, nothing else. Just dust. Great. Um, I got some magic. I got a hand axe, which is what you use to chop the nice. wood to get the oven going. <laughs> right? I have, I have a rake because I need to rake the leaves in front of my human <laughs> abode. <laughs> it's funny that I took a horn as my instrument and you're a car. I just... <laughs> I'm I'm one of your instruments. You are. It's fine. I love it. I could I could play you technically. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there, <laughs> there's a manual horn option in there. I love it. Oh man. Uh, okay. I would get in so much trouble if this was a podcast. I would absolutely put in all the saxophone music that I have no rights to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so so one of the cool things about my character, the the night agent archetype, is I get the embrace of the moon. Nice. So um, depending on the current lunar phase, I get different advantages. So during a full moon, I have advantage on perception, investigation, and insight checks. Neat. Uh, during an ascendant moon, uh, the moon gives courage and resourcefulness. I have advantage on initiative checks and saving throws to avoid the frightened condition. Yeah. When, when the moon's descending, uh, the moon preserves life. Your speed increases by 10 feet. Ooh, hell yeah. And you get a plus one bonus to all saving throws. And on a new moon, the moon hides you in shadows. You advantage on advantage on stealth, sleight of hand, and deception checks. Awesome. That's that's really cool. Yeah, it's a lot to keep track of, but it's awesome. And also, do, yeah. it's super realistic because the, because the phases of the moon do affect car performance, and it's nice to see it finally statted out. I know. It seems exactly. like an absolute nightmare for a GM because you have to keep track of the phases right. of the moon <laughs> and make your... They're always going to be asking you, where's the moon? I don't know. Well, the fact that, like, Hang on. Is it call lightning Get that has calendar. damage dice that are dependent on whether it's raining out? So every time I play with a druid, yes. someone's like, hey, is it raining? 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 No. I don't know. Did you cast control weather? Okay, then shut up. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, no, it's always like, 68 degrees and sunny. Man, I am doing, I'm putting in so much effort to make sure that everyone in the party has something to do every session. Yeah, I forget sometimes that your one spell keys off of the <laughs> rain for some reason. I want to make a DM's screen, right? That is doesn't have any of the rules on it. It just has, here's all these atmospheric things you should always think about. Here's the time. Here's your calendar. Here's the things that breathe some life into I your world. I think I have one of those. Oh, really? I would love a link to that. That would be, yeah, that I've would, got that would it, be I've amazing. Got it. Uh, there was a table that I had rolled on when I uh, tried running D&D &D once um, that had random weather effects depending on the region of the world you're in. That's cool. And I like and I use that. I like set up the first like ten days of play. Yeah. I said day one, this is the weather. Then then it just went from there and kind of progressed from that. That's I smart. accidentally rolled tornado for oh. one of the days. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Uh, we didn't we didn't get to that in the right. gameplay. But my, that would have been wild. See, and like you wouldn't really have thought about that any other way. Like I'm not yeah. just going to throw in a tornado, but what fun! That's great. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I see. I want okay. like a, I want a D. I, I want like an electronic DMs. You know, a DMs aid that helps mm -hmm. you tell stories more than it helps you roll numbers. Oh I yeah. I think that for the kind of storytelling people are doing online, that would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a programmer, and if I do anything else, Dylan will come to my house and beat me with a stick until yeah. I stop because I yeah. have other things to do. <laughs> stop being so busy, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Stay on. on track, Rob. I'm I will trying. throw you. I'm working on it. Off the cliff. You will. Do of you your have? Wedding. Do you have to be proficient with armor to have it bolted yes. onto your body permanently? It's so dumb, but I guess you would have to. I mean, I guess you have to have the right body type to have armor attached. You are technically wearing it. Yeah. But I'm not utilizing it. 
I mean, I'm not you, moving correctly, and it is I mean, just look. A well, thing if that you want to move around, yeah, you can take <laughs> you can take the armor you're not proficient in that your body type wasn't built for. Sure. I mean, what would happen? What what happens when you use armor I that you're not proficient? You're at disadvantage for yeah, you're things, at disadvantage right? for like sixteen things because D and D hates people. Oh. Yep. Yep. That's annoying. Because if you've not done it before and you're not good at it, you just like are incompetent. So, Those are the choices. I'm good at it or I'm completely incompetent and too stupid to figure it out. <laughs> so with eight hours of work, your armor can be integrated into your body so you can't take uh, so you can't take it off without four hours of work. Wow. Integrated heavy armor doesn't reduce your speed and it imposes no disadvantage on dexterity okay. checks. Oh, or stealth checks. there's also sure. dexterity stealth if checks. you wear armor that you lack proficiency with, you have disadvantage on any ability check, saving throw, or attack rolls that involve strength or dexterity, and you can't cast spells. You yeah. are weighed down and can't quite move properly. So anything you do that is That's physical, annoying. basically, That's it annoying. is annoying. That's fine. I can, ha I, at the very least, okay, so I can have my leather armor uh, integrated with my body. Leather I guess studded leather? If we, do we want to do like a little Mad Max uh, uh, aesthetic here uh, with some studded leather integrated into my body frame? Because I thought that, I think that would be kind of cool. I like it. Um, For and, Mad and Max. I can, and I can I feel like this whole episode has been Ryan making his character and everybody else being like, okay. Uh -huh. and oh, like yeah, nobody else has like made any character decisions <laughs> other than like our races. I am a very, very suave smuggler saxophone playing elephant. Exactly. I've I I've know, seen two like... very fleshed out characters here I'm... in a cart. Uh who is metal and filled with regret. <laughs> I'm like, I know you're making a baker. I just feel like Ryan is like making all of these like eight million oh, no, no, decisions. No. Everybody's or making... at least making them out yeah. loud. And I'm like <laughs> I just, I just okay, have a I'm lot fine. of, I just have a lot of like stuff at the, at the race level. Yep. Uh, and, and I say that with every pun intended. I, yeah, no, um, I, I was aware it was a joke. <laughs> Maybe that's why it feels like Ryan is taking this over. Uh, I'm just like. Cause there's too many opportunities for folks. So I think like, the way you fluff this is we just give you the AC bonus and the leather is your seats. Oh, there you go. I mean, that would make yeah. the most sense You know, to that, me. that mm -hmm. plus three to your armor class is really just stain resistance because you don't have cloth seats. That makes sense. <laughs> well, we'll yeah. go with that. See, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And I can have up to four weapons integrated into my body. Fun. A ram. <laughs> right? but, they can't, but it can't be a longbow or a short bow or a sling. Well, yeah, because that wouldn't make okay. sense. No, that would be completely ridiculous, so, right? So Everything it's gonna, else it's, is sensible, right? So it's going to be a crossbow. Right. Show yeah. you totally and, built on the and, hood. And, yeah. a, and, a, and a rapier. Hell yeah. It's got to be a... I don't know how well, that works, a thrusting weapon. The rapiers... Well, okay, look, look, look. So the there's front. a ram-type weapon. So there should be yeah. like a spear or something on the front, right? Some sort of thrusting thing where you ram into them. Then like blades that either pop out of the doors or are like attached to the wheels or something. So if yeah. you run alongside someone, you do the whole chariot thing where you just take so them. Oh, there thing. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rape. I could have two rapiers. Your, yeah. your oh, yeah. natural weapon is a 2d4, which is immediately better than anything that's dealing a d6 or less, and it's roughly equivalent to rolling a d8. Also true. So I'm thinking we have two heavy crossbows installed behind the headlights. Very James mm -hmm. Bond. Very James uh, Bond. And we don't worry about the rest of it so that later down the line we can install the oil slick and eventually <laughs> the thing that's... <laughs> Leave some slots yeah, open. And then the thing that's going to fire the beads of fireball when we eventually install the rocket launcher. Oh, there or you go. You're level four. One of your magic items could be, oh, what is that magic alchemy item jug. that produces all the different liquids? The alchemy jug. There's an alchemy jug in your trunk. Oh, the fact oh, that yeah. I knew where yeah. you were going before you got there was really disappointing <laughs> to me. <laughs> it's because of our mutual love and respect. Uh, it's because I've been subjected uh -huh. to this for too long. It's Amazing. also because I have tortured you. Listen. <laughs> I'm trying to pick my 800 cantrips and spells, and I. Oh yeah, you got to pick all that stuff, don't you? Yeah, um, and it's hard actually. That's all right. Um, now I didn't know that Aram was going to be a performer, so I don't know if I should go with the Seeker of Hope anymore. But I do like the fact that I'm proficient with my car horn. No, but the two of you and have to work together me. sometimes. That's true. Also, 
let's let's be honest here. Your stats are so low that like <laughs> it doesn't have matter. proficiency in whatever you want, bud. That's true. I have a feature of bestowed joy. I disagree. All, uh, they're, they're, uh, the seeker of hope is always welcome in settlements. This is a hell world. Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> love this world. Uh, suggested traits. All right, I'm going to roll up these traits because yeah. why not? Seven. Uh, personality traits. I do not easily give in to despair, but when it happens, I sink into a very deep sadness. Oh, that's, that's a little too real right there. Oh, you can be a depressed car. <laughs> Only when it happens. I'm usually fine. Everything's fine. What are you rolling now? Your yep. flaws and stuff? No, my per- yeah, traits, ideals, oh bonds, and flaws, yeah. Um, and I also just don't want to look up what all these characters do. You can usually guess by the names. Learning is for losers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Drop out of school, counts. Don't do mm-hmm. a degree in physics. Oh, this is a very depressed car. Uh, my ideals, false hopes, evil. In my heart, I know that hope is nothing more than uh, palliatives and lies. So this is a jaded secret agent. Yeah, apparently. Oh, I play. I play the part because, you know, the truth is more uh, depressing. I legitimately think if we rebuilt this party in Shadowrun, it would be way at way more. <laughs> <laughs> this is proof that D&D can do anything. Yeah. Even Shadowrun. <laughs> because let's be badly. honest, let's be honest, Shadowrun isn't doing Shadowrun so great either. Uh, so That's very fair. Okay. For my bonds, a priest from a small church gave me asylum one night when I was tired from my journey. Uh, I promise to repay his kindness when I get the chance. Uh, I like a good uh, bond that has a pun in it. That's basically half your character. <laughs> yeah. I need four more cantrips on top of the four I already have. Oh no, my character's the worst. I am terrible at bargaining, and I end up doing underpaid jobs or buying worthless items and paying their weight in gold. Ah, uh, I love. I'm, su- I'm such a bad spy. You should have just like Chotsky's all over your dash, like the entire inside of the car. Is just mm. That's why we can't ride the mm-hmm. car. <laughs> <laughs> full of bobbleheads and McDonald's little containers. This is starting to grow. It's like no, no, no. <laughs> no. Those are Those collectibles. Have... Those are collectibles. They're all in the same. I've, it's like there's I've a got bunch of McDonald's set. toys no, those in the are, bag. Those still. are the that's the Jurassic Park limited edition cup. <laughs> Can't throw that out. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the special Happy Meal box that was only given out at one particular McDonald's seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Seven years ago. It's got the original meal inside like of it. Seven years ago. Don't touch it. <laughs> and it's still just as edible. Okay, so you know two first level spells of your choice. I'm saying I didn't get any magic, but you know what? I'm fine with that. The spells no not column on the sorcerer table shows when you learn more spells. Great. Oh, no wonder. It's like way past. I love this. I, I love this ideal. For all my many lies. I place a high value on friendship. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, you you missed my sad sad car. Um, so oh, no. I say no. Um, so what did I what did I roll? Um, my my personality trait. I do not easily give in to despair, but when it happens, I sink very deep into a very deep sadness. Sure, a flat tire. Yep. Okay. And then my my ideals: false hopes, evil. In my heart, I know that hope is nothing more than palliatives and lies. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I mean, you're a car. So, I, <laughs> sure. You know, yeah. And especially when I'm not even an Aston Martin, but I, I believe I am. Mm-hmm. You're a knockoff car. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. You're, I don't even you're, remember you're built on that. lies. Quite literally built on lies. Yeah. Yep. I feel like I'm just going to pick these spells based on yeah, what they're no, called. Of course. Yeah. That's, that's fun. Yeah. That's what we're doing. No, do it. Okay. Honestly, we don't need to have every spell picked. We're not playing these things. Just need vibes. You gotta, you gotta know what you're capable of, right? Yeah. I'm how not doing that many spells doing. because I am not sitting here figuring out how many new ones I get at each level. Oh yeah, Mm-mm. especially with sorcerer when when they come well, naturally, I mean, right? It's just however many the table says at level four. You know the level four slot. That's true. So again, investigation. That's another one. Yep. My two personality traits are that. 
Nothing rattles me. I have a lie for every occasion. And I enjoy doing things others believe to be impossible. <laughs> oh, but I also have this thing where you get to find a spell from a different class. Right. Great. Yeah, make it a little bit more, like, make it a little bit more complicated. Yeah. It's fun that uh, way. You can choose to replace one of your spells upon getting started. It says you can choose. Spell must be chosen from the same class list. This is ridiculous. It says you can choose. That means you can ignore it. No, this is for like my subclass uh. thing. You learn one cantrip and one first level spell from a different spellcasting classes list. Mm. They're considered sorcerer spells for you. And don't count against your limit for sorcerer spells. No. Oh, someone stole my ship and I burned to recover it. Yes, that is my bond. Yes. <laughs> and my nice. flaw is that lying is so reflexive that I just sometimes lie to lie for no reason whatsoever. I'll just oh, lie. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Thanks. But I'm an elephant, so I never forget a lie. <laughs> what is a fun first level spell that I can take? Ready? Somebody say Magic something. Magic missile. I'm sorry. Cure I'm wounds. <laughs> what? Hold on. What's this word? <laughs> we all said something at the same time. Color spray. <laughs> Wait, you can't cast cure wounds. Hang on. Wait. I need one Rares. cantrip and one spell. You're a sorcerer, correct? Yes, but I have to pick it. Yeah, from something yeah. else. Uh, mage hand. Oh, I was just and saying. And shield. Mage hands is not fun. No, Mage is not fun. It is useful. She is useful. not fun. She specifically said, what spell is fun? Poison spray. Yeah, but Try so, so color color spray. Already do Mage hand. <laughs> color but spray is fun. Already... There we go. You found one. That's... But I can already oh. do those ones. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Those are already oh. sorcerer spells. Okay. I, they're all like almost the same. It just says pick some. Right. Uh, I'm, like, I'm, I'm pulling up all the, all the thorn trips now. <laughs> no. Shillelagh. <laughs> thorn whip's fun. Gosh. Gust is fun. There's because there's a lot Hail of stuff of that if you can like get out of your face so it won't hurt you, that's a helpful thing. Which one was that? Uh, gust. It makes just just, it just creates like a little blast of wind. Mm. Um, lightning lore is kind of neat because it's this weird spell of like you sink it into someone and then you pull them towards you. You're like it's like your get over here kind of thing. It's a fourth edition spell. Yes, it is a fourth edition spell. Because it makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, that makes sense. It controls motion. That's what 5th edition is all about. Right. It's moving people around to trigger Mold more Earth. action so that you can hit them more. Fair enough. <laughs> Mold Earth is kind of neat. Oh, um, yeah. That, that's got some good uses to yeah. it. Yeah. It's just, it's just kind of like a, a thematically fun thing. Mind Sliver, Minor Illusion are all fun. What are those under? Um, uh, Mind Sliver. Hang on. Sorry. I'm going to go back. I want it is under... Enchantment. Don't know what class casts it? Yeah. Fair. Don't know. Doesn't say because, of course, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, <laughs> I said because I think they have to both be from the same one. They can't. They can't oh, the first level. I don't I know. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I'm just. I'm scrolling through and seeing what sounds interesting. From the druid list, shillelagh and jump. Mm -hmm. Jump up real, real oh. high. Come down. Hit him with a big <laughs> stick. Mm -hmm. Great. Of it. Done. Jump it's is a Mario lot of fun. combo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and pick spells for real. This is ridiculous. I can't read that much. <laughs> There's not enough Adderall in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I do um, like that. At first level, you can spend one sorcery point to cast detect evil and good, and this this ability is detect fiends. Even though I am one, so. Yeah. Hopefully it still works on. Detect me's. You just got to not have your hands in front of you so that they don't like glow too bright. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The spell is just a mirror. You learn one language of your choice. You gain proficiency in two of the following skills. Blah. Amazing. Wow. I, I think I'm done with my character. Okay. I think. I can, uh, oh, my languages. I can read, write, and speak common as well as rev. Nice. Mm-hmm. It's a language. <laughs> I know. Oh, he's angry today. <laughs> it's probably like a like a Morris code sort of. Yeah. Like a long rev, short rev, sort mm -hmm. of dashes. Bunch of honks. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh Lord. What a wild, wild character type. Yeah. Oh, it's a whole speech pattern based on the based on the Doppler effect. I want to do this. I want to do this again as a magical girl too. Yeah, Goodness. I don't. I think this, this is so many... D and D for the rest of. My life. <laughs> I think you could be a magical girl car. I wish you could multi class. Be amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Ugh. 
Why is why is the half of something always assumed to be half human, half whatever? That doesn't make any sense either. Also, exactly. wh- like, why is it even like, why is it always possible? Like, I mean, if like half orcs clearly came from something, but sometimes half orcs were just made out of magic and mud. And like, mm-hmm. why can they mate with human beings? Like, yep. why can elves that literally walked out of trees mate with human beings? Why is that even possible? So I don't well, know. This mm-hmm. is the thing we keep coming back to. The reason species can't interbreed is because they're too genetically dissimilar. So the actual underlying reasoning is based on genetics in a world where conservation right. of energy does not hold. <laughs> yes, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't care because in this world that conservation of, of energy does not hold, okay, you still can't, you know, have a baby with a horse. <laughs> They're so, I'm sorry, but the thing that walked out of the tree that's all tree doesn't have sex with people. At least no, can't produce a baby. There's just no fair, way. If they are... Okay, you know, like a humanoid. It, the sort of implication is right. that the actual species is humanoid, and then right. you have orcs. Right, but that's just, just that's, that's just human arrogance. That's just us centering okay. ourselves. It, that's all. Okay, it is. yeah, you can interpret the way that the book was written however you like. The fact that it's the word humanoid, but that's like fair. that's how I. That's how that. But you know, you know what? If you do, if you interpret all D and D books that way, if they were written by humans for humans, from that perspective, they make a lot more sense. Well, I'm gonna blow your mind. Yeah, go ahead. All the D and D books. I know they're they, for they humans, were written by humans. I know. You know I know that, them? Dylan. But I'm saying, it wasn't dogs. Dylan, I'm saying that they, Dylan. <laughs> I know that, Dylan. I'm saying that if this world had goblins and orcs and dragons and D and D, but a D and D book was written, it'd be written for humans in a world that had other creatures. And yes, I realized they probably wouldn't write a D&D book for a world that was I mean, D&D. you say that, but how many but like, they weird did, historical RPGs exist? They never succeed because yes, they're but, specifically for people who are going to just play war games anyway. Yes, but that, that, that analogy does work. That analogy would have to be like if games existed, if game mechanics were real and they're not. Like that's how that analogy would work. Like it would be like there are still superhero comics in a world yeah, with superheroes. That's what I'm saying. It's like if right? goblins and orcs yeah. and everything still existed, we would still wind up with something like D&D. Oh, sure. Yeah, we, I, I, guess that we, I guess that we would. Because be, it would be like yeah. modern. Yeah, we do like, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, we invented D&D and then someone was like, what if we made D20 modern? And it was a bad idea. Oh, that's my first RPG. Done. The fact that you're here is a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's what I always say, too. D20 modern could be done right. If it was... My armor class is 13. Nice. So you're kind of bulletproof. <laughs> Question. <laughs> if I'm sitting inside you, is my armor class 13? No. You would probably count as partially. Yeah, you would have to go through the and have whatever you the, the windshield first. Yeah, you do. You would go through the partially hidden rules. Oh, uh, right, partial cover, right? Plus like two that. AC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, partial cover. Yeah. I'll yeah, take yeah. that. That's great. <laughs> Can anybody take any background? Is that? Yeah, I took. Yeah, I just took a. I took a background from a different book. I took Baker okay. as a background. Because I'm. Just, I was gonna take maybe one from like the Nightfall book because I feel like I'm like. Yeah, go for it. Book. Nightfell has a lot of good backgrounds in it. Yeah, I like this book. I have taken Smuggler and Inort an inordinate amount of times because I have a secret fantasy of being a smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Mm, oh, yeah. I'm for sure going to go with this one called Touched by Evil. Oh, yeah. I saw that one. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Explain. You will touch her. It's Touch by Evil. Why? No, but is there a description? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At some so point, you, you were like, touched explain by why evil. I picked it, and I was like, so, I don't. Okay, so touch is when two things come yeah. into contact. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Evil, what you yeah. do on a Bad, regular right. basis. Uh, let's see. <laughs> the ones who are most scarred by the dark, by what the darkness brings, however, are those who have seen what happens when the darkness comes into the light. I feel like this is very descriptive of this like particular setting, and mm-hmm. I don't care. I just like that it's called touch by evil. Honestly. It's really good. Uh, yeah. It's the anti touched by an angel. Right. That's the other one. I yeah. hated that show, so I was going to take this. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So my personality trait I rolled, I tend to get attached easily and look for solid bonds to compensate for my loss. 
Mm. Neat. Love people who are compensating for something. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, there. I'm right there. As far as spells, I chose my cantrips are friends, minor illusion, and prestidigitation. All uh, good things for a, uh, you know, entertainment. Prestidigitation is, is probably one of the most, like, utility-worthy mm -hmm. uh, cantrips out there. 100%. Also, for a, a smuggler, it's the look over there cantrip, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, Ryan. Yeah. My ideal is yearning. Evil. Ooh. <laughs> Darkness has charmed me, and I yearn to acquire more of its power. Ooh. That's not me at all. Though. I thought you were just yearning no. for evil. Yeah. <laughs> as far as my first level spells, I have Disguise Self, which... Frankly, as a giant elephant person and a smuggler, Love. probably Love. comes in handy. Yeah. Sleep, which is real handy because you don't want to kill people. You just need the 15 minutes to get away yep. and thunder wave for when all of that doesn't go well. Nice. And then I also have enthrall, perfect for an entertainer, right? Or to keep everyone's attention while the boat leaves. Mm -hmm. Hold person, just stay right there, leave. Locate object. Find the thing. Silence. Now, this is fun because this doesn't have any practical effect, really. Because the only reason he has silence is so when he's doing a performance, <laughs> and someone <laughs> won't shut up. And go, silence! And then continue the performance. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so his I have for cantrips, light, mending, and thaumaturgy. For nice. first level spells, mm. I have Arctic. detect poison and disease, create and destroy water, purify food and drink, all business. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> Guiding Bolt and Shield of Faith. Uh, because the first level cleric spells are kind of boring. I also automatically get Bless and Cure mm -hmm. Wounds because Life Cleric. Mm -hmm. And then at second level, I have also Hold Person and Locate Object. And also Silence for a different reason. Mm. <laughs> it's because I hate you. <laughs> we just, whoever can get it off first. I really do not know how I fit into any of this. I, I'm pretty sure that's disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> how you'll did be, we all? <laughs> you'll be the um, audience analog. Oh, the fanfic's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you, did we have, did we make characters? I think we made Can characters. I, I think we're done enough. What is your yeah. room room's name? Did you pick a name? Oh, yeah, Nat. Nat. Nat, right? Oh, no. N A T T. Every time Nat rolls up, the doors pop open. Get in me, losers. Yep, that's the the <laughs> Night Agents uh, two thousand. Um, <laughs> the Night Agents two thousand. Um, uh, you know what? Uh, she her pronouns. Yeah, as well. Uh, gotta get that uh that alluring uh. It's a femme like, fatale right, car. Cars. Femme fatale. Right. Femme yeah, fatale. No, car. Makes, yeah, yeah. It's a that car with sense. eyelashes. I gotta be um. Gosh, I I haven't picked an alignment at all. But uh, well, no, you just have to be aligned. Uh, cha chaotic. <laughs> right. Uh, chaotic. Uh, neutral. Neutral seems right for a car. Sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. It just keeps yeah. going. Just like a car. drive. <laughs> I've, yeah. got, I've, I've got a very, neutral would seem, a very I mean, chaotic drive. Uh, but, but like cars like follow, like, I mean, they're machines. They follow, well, but you're not a machine. You're just a machine looking. Thing. Yeah, it looks no, like a but machine. If you want to continue, continue to be on the road, you do need to be lawful. This is true. Uh, actually, uh, uh, rules as written. I'm gonna the, the alignment. Vroom vrooms disobey laws when Ooh, they can get away yeah, with everybody doing so. Speeds a little bit sure. using their physical differences as justification for their behavior. Oh, they tend that. to be chaotic neutral. Yeah, <laughs> that that's really accurate. That you 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 hate how real that is. The <laughs> fact that the sentence was using their physical differences as an excuse they try to get away with behaving differently. Yeah, no, I feel like yeah. that has some disgusting implications. <laughs> I do too. I, I feel like it's exactly what happens when people get inside cars. I feel like it is exactly I'm a little more concerned happens, that like someone wrote yeah. that in a book. I am too. But yes, I mean, no, that is like, how drivers because, behave. Yeah, because they're big, therefore, they're, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess it, 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 could, it could have said in place of that, because they can crush you under their giant 3,000 yeah. pound wheels. Mm. Maybe that would have helped. Yeah. 
it's hard to think about your feelings as you're going to the wheels. Right. I mean, you can you can kind of see that this was made uh, before the alignment yeah. upheaval at mm. Wizards, right? Totally. Um, totally. Because they, you're making 450 plus like character race options, right? right? And you have to do an alignment box of text for every single one of those, yeah, right? They, they could have saved a lot of time. Yeah. 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 So, so we took all these characters uh, from all these different supplements. Uh, what sort of world does this make? Uh, um, I, okay. So first of all. In this world, smuggling we, exists. Would never do this. <laughs> yeah. And drones. Ever. Agreed. It's, agreed. <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. yeah like, it's really hard. Um, Without the tools like D&D Beyond, D&D is yeah. very difficult to, to, to get going. Mm-hmm. You know. And realizing these characters would be like nigh unplayable too, because like right. I'd have to have like a bunch of different books yeah. open. Like, yep. yeah. Thankfully, like with my iPad, like I just like copied and pasted like blurbs from every book, and like yeah. to my character sheet is like ten pages yeah. long with right. all my stuff. So but, I mean, like, right. honestly, this we we said it before. Uh, we yeah. made Shadowrun, right? This is a yeah. this is a cyberpunk dystopia. I don't. Is it? Right? I mean, is I it? guess. I guess I have like sort You're of. You're a, a weird digital demon. That's true. Like, we have yeah. a car in yeah. our party. That's true. Yep. Yeah. A sentient car. You're basically Alexa is your character. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, because that's the name I was going to pick. <laughs> you are also <laughs> evil. Because even though I picked yep. this like sorcery school that's like blood of the lost from this book called Planet Apocalypse, which I wow. really love, by the way. Nice. Um, it, it Yes, the rest of you are playing a very different game than what I was happen- having over here. So, <laughs> yes. If it makes me money, I'm yeah. on board. Well, but like, right. yeah. Well, I mean, is this is like medieval cyberpunk. Yeah. Right? Right. So not like skyscrapers and, and whatnot, but like digital castles. It's iron and punk is what it is. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, le- but like with, with Steam, computers oh, and Steam cars. Punk, no, but it's not. Like but it's no, like it's it like doesn't have. I I like the neon aesthetic applied to medieval yes. times. Yeah, I okay. do too. Like that. That sounds lot. amazing. That does so sound here, super here's cool. the thing, though. This is the absolute extreme of the thing we brought up several times. We, what we arrived at is a party that if you rebuilt in Shadowrun would be completely reasonable, except for you. Uh, mm-hmm. Ryan, you would have to build a guy who plugs into his car as opposed to just straight up is the car, but that would immediately, like, it dovetails yeah. real nicely. But, well, not necessarily, though, because there are so many, like, cybernetic enhancements, and there are, like, parts of those stories where it's like people have replaced so many parts yeah. of themselves that they are yeah. not yeah. themselves Having anymore. someone who functions yeah. as, and so like, there is the potential. who is entirely digital and maybe has, like, a humanoid-looking avatar so they can show up in the office building scenes and then takes control. Right. Yeah. But that's like, yeah. you're working in the same ballpark, right? But at the end right. of the day, mm-hmm. if you're trying to build magic. this in D&D, it is incoherent. And the thing <laughs> you have to just accept on that one is, like, not building a world around this party, picking a world to drop this party mm-hmm. into, and then just taking the party as an axiom. The party exists. This is the truth. And this is what we're dealing with, folks. And, uh-huh. right, whatever that yeah. means is what that means. So, yeah. okay, yeah. how many, I want to know how many books we used. I know this isn't really our, technically our discussion oh, episode. Do we want to save this for our discussion episode? We can talk about the rest of this. Yeah, we can talk about it in the discussion. We'll wrap this up yeah. and then do some math on that too, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you both f- so much for joining us and for still being here <laughs> at the end of these episodes. No, no. <laughs> Especially you, Dylan. I really <laughs> thought you were going to walk away. <laughs> Some point. You have heard. <laughs> Thank you for making maybe D and D characters. Heard what with I us. deal with on our <laughs> podcast. This was this was fun. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Good. I honestly, yeah. it was a delight. It um, was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you both want to remind everybody where they can find you online and plug any projects yeah. that you feel like plugging? So in case you forgot. Hi, my name is Dylan, and uh, you can find me on Kill Every Monster. You can follow the podcast at KEM Podcasts on Twitter or me at DJ Malenfant. Yes, and my name is Aram Vartian. You can find everything I do at my website, aram.gay, which I... <laughs> 
pay yes. an exorbitant fee to keep every year, and I don't care. I'm <laughs> going to keep paying every it. Worth Please find us on Patreon so that Aram it. does not go bankrupt yeah. keeping his goofy website extensions. Stupid gay. URL, babe. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Aram Vartan. You can find the show, as Dylan said, at KM Podcast, and everything about the show at killeverymonster.com. Wonderful. Uh, well, again, thank you both uh, for being here with us. Thank you, everybody, for sticking still with us. Here, if you hope. are, <laughs> if you are still here after these episodes, uh, 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 applause to you. It's uh, no commitment, uh, folks. No commitment. Up to the episode. Thank um, you for tolerating uh, series fifty, and this, we're gonna kill the show. Series fifty. Uh, uh. <laughs> you know, we yeah. can only go up from here, so it's fine. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> anyway, I mean, uh, we tried the barrier. You could only go up from here. <laughs> we did it to ourselves. It's okay. It's true. Uh, please join us on the next episode for our probably very enlightening discussion block. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Uh, well, uh, Dungeons and Dragons is uh, is a game that people can play, and you can add all sorts of Just things. Just about to, anything. All, all sorts of things to it uh, to to make it uh, wh- whatever you want. I I guess or don't want <laughs> or don't or don't. Uh, no, I think that this was a really interesting thought exercise. I'm excited for our discussion when we kind of you know, have to get into it and Mm -hmm. figure out how to make all of this work, which, dear listeners, we have not actually recorded yet. Um, So I don't know how it goes. Yeah. But it was a fun thought exercise to just say, like, there's all of this stuff out here for a game. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it just, how do we make it work? Exactly. And I think, you know, we we learned in our last episode um, that in a lot of ways it doesn't. But in so many ways it does. Like, I I would have a blast playing this bizarro world D&D, honestly. Yeah, I think you have to have the right GM. You have to have, like, buy-in from everybody. Yeah, if you're, you're going to be mixing um, this much, it cannot be serious. Yeah, I mean, and I'd just be interested to see, like, how difficult it is to run something like mm-hmm. this, how it is, you know, with which is the variety of feats and things that we end up yeah. with um i mean I, what, if, what I, if i if i were a dm i would i would uh have my character uh my, my vroom vroom act as a centaur if if a character was a centaur player character like in a traditional game right they, they yeah. count as large large creatures just like the car and they're heavier just like the car and i'm sure they have difficulties climbing just like a car um you know all sorts of things like that that's so, another example of like one of those having to make up your own rules to make things work. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, so I mean, um, it's, it's a lot of fun, but goodness gracious, uh, it can go places if you just randomly throw supplements at it, like we discovered. Yeah. And it's fine. I'm excited to see, to like really break it down with them though and see what their thoughts are as people that run this kind of game. Absolutely. You know? uh, but before we let you go for the week, uh, we do have just a few calls to action. First... Today is the last day, we think, uh, to get your questions in for our Q&A episodes. We are hoping to record them tomorrow, if you're listening to this on the day it comes out. Mm -hmm. So please drop your questions uh, in our form at questions.charactercreationcast.com so we can answer them on the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you are desperate to hear more from us, uh, consider backing the One Shot Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Uh, You can get access to the Secret Archive, which will have several episodes from us uh, and other shows on the network. Uh, Watch that feed if you loved our Marvel episodes and want to hear our souls shatter uh, just just a little bit more. Um, It's the game that keeps on giving. It's it's true. (laughs) But also uh, consider saving some of your money because... Coming up on Monday, May 16th, it's Miracle Monday, uh, where Jeff Stormer is going to be hosting a superhero-themed stream on the One Shot Network Twitch channel. Uh, We teamed up with Jeff and John from System Mastery to record an actual play that will be part of the stream. Uh, We're not sure what time yet, but we'll keep you posted once we know. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we did that using our characters that we created in Marvel Superheroes back in Series 49. Mm -hmm. So the stream will have a 
bunch of great superhero content, um, all in the name of getting donations for Trans Lifeline. So it's going to be great content for a great cause. And you can find all of that next week, Monday, May 16th at twitch.tv slash one shot RPG. Absolutely. Uh, and hey, uh, we got we have one review to read. I, I'm very excited. Uh, I know. Uh, I just found this out. I typed up the notes at the beginning and said we didn't have any reviews. But surprise, people that stay <laughs> to the end, you get a bonus. Yeah. Because apparently Ryan just informed me we do have one review. Yes. Uh, so th- this one uh, is from Podcast Addict. Um, and I, I, I apologize. I'm probably going to butcher this name because it's all put together. Uh, K- Kinder Adling uh, Efara? So- something like that? Uh, posted uh, back in April. A loving, sometimes love-hating, enthusiastic, (laughs) and really entertaining exploration of different TTRPGs. Ryan and Amelia have a lovely dynamic and skillfully includes their guests in their creative shenanigans. Truly recommend a listen to this chaos of creativity, puns, and necromancer plus magical girl team-ups. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I love it. I, I, and the use of shenanigans, uh, shenanigans uh, for those listening, uh, probably my favorite word. It's a great word. It is such a fantastic word. It is incredibly useful. Uh huh. Uh huh. We don't give that word enough credit. We do not. So, <laughs> A plus on you. Absolutely. For working that word in there. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, so th- that's all that we have for reviews, though. Uh, so if if you want to help out uh, and, and give us a review and, and make us feel amazing and use words like shenanigans uh, more often, uh, mm-hmm. please consider leaving one. Uh, we would love to read it here on the show like we just did. Uh, you can leave one on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, and Facebook. Uh, there might be other places. If you find one, let us know because we we tried looking. Uh, and we goodness did. gracious, there's not many anymore. So um, no. you can also join our Discord at discord.characteracationcast.com and chat directly with us. Yes. Uh, that's it for our calls to action. We were super on point with both our opening and our closing today. Yeah. So A plus for us. Absolutely. Uh, as I said before, as of this recording, we haven't actually wrapped up this discussion episode. We are recording that this weekend. Um, so I can't give you any hints about what's to come because I don't know. It's a secret even to me. Uh, but I'm guessing it'll be pretty great. Yeah. Uh, especially when we try to make all of this fit together. I, honestly, uh, the, into a thing. the discussion uh, throughout the series has been phenomenal. And I cannot wait uh, to hear what we have uh, for the discussion for this whole series. So. Yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Stay tuned for so, that. And I hope you are too. Mm-hmm. Uh, until then, have a great rest of your week, everyone. Please stay safe. Drink some water. Relax those shoulders. Probably still wear a mask. Uh, vaccinate. And most importantly, keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, 
Check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like System Mastery. System Mastery is a delightful stroll through the history of role-playing games. Except the games are terrible, and the hosts are real jerks about everything. Join hosts Jeff and John as they explore the weirdest games ever made to talk about what worked, what went wrong, and which silver hawk was the best? It was Hot Wing, don't even add us. Find their shows at systemmasterypodcast.com or oneshotpodcast.com. Finally.